Brad seemed more relaxed tonight than he has in the last week or ten days. Maybe he's dying inside, but on the surface he seemed more relaxed. Well, I think he, uh, it's something that he was worried about getting here. Once you get to the middle round, that's the first step that you have to go. He definitely would like to have a better record. But I think if he's going into the dressing room relaxed, it's going to show on his team and how they come out and approach this game. And this is one game that you can't go out there and let the butterflies control your hands. Ron Roosh has made his way from down in the corner at ice level up to the broadcast booth. A little bit of tension here tonight, sir. Oh, you could feel it. Everywhere around the the gateway down there where the ice machine, the uh, Olympia, as they call it, goes off the ice. People are leaning over. What do you think is going to happen? Can we beat them? It's been like that all day, really, around the Saddle Dome. People are here to watch other games, but they're all pointing towards this one tonight, including that man, of course, who has done so well, Victor Tikhanov, for running this team over the years, a full decade. And he now is up against it a little bit. He knows he's no longer in first place. If he loses, it's going to be a real scramble down the stretch. Here we go with Hampshire against Larianov as the Soviets and Canada are underway here in Calgary. Number four, Tony Stiles for Canada. Bouncing it off the boards and Ken Berry to flex it in. This is Fatisov back for the Soviets. Stick handling out of there to Larianov. He tipped it ahead and here comes Karutov, number nine, into Canada's zone. Karutov bumped by Stiles, cuts back of the net, trying to center. Karutov does, but Stiles there to break it up, and now Trent Yanni carries out for Canada. Long shot. Milnikov handles that. Took no chance as Sherbin was cutting in, and Milnikov held onto it, and then a little push by Hampshire at Fatisov. Well, Biatchis left Fatisov. He is part of the team that won a silver medal in 1980, so he is in his third Olympics right now, and his last. There will be a number of players, about six or seven of them, who will be leaving this team after the game on Sunday, which will be the final game of the tournament. They like to make their changes just as the Olympics end. Do you remember, of course, Trechak retired. His last game was the Olympics of 1984. And they will build for four years, adding and replacing and so on, until they have a team for 1992. Here's the line for Canada of Tambellini, Poplinski, and Vildroff. Randy Gregg and Zarli Zalatsky on defense, and here's Zalatsky shooting it down the ice. Back as Fiakin couldn't clear it. Canada hold it in, dump it behind the net, but there to take over is Semyonov, number 30. He drops it back for Gusarov, number 5. Alexei Gusarov flips it into center ice. Soviets on the attack is number 25. Yashin shot it back to the net. Unable to center was Pomatov, and Canada starts back with Steve Tambellini getting at the center. That's as far as he came, got. Now coming back the other way, Sweatlock. Trying to center, Poplinski intercepts. And cleared it out of there. Now back in the zone, we're going to get a penalty. As number 25, Yashin, was upended. And I think Randy Gregg may have caught the eye of the referee. Well, it was right in front of the referee, and Gregg just upended Yashin as he was cutting across in front of the net. And so Canada gets itself a penalty it really didn't need or want to take. Watch directly in front of the net. There it is, a cross check. Knocked him flat. Well, Ron, I'm surprised at that penalty because the one thing you don't want to do is put this team, uh, the Soviets, on the power play. And really, that player in front of the net was not dangerous because the Soviets didn't have really good control of the puck. I think it's a little nerves coming through on the doctor. You want to hear a good power play stat? The Soviets are 12 for 24. That adds up to 50%. They're dangerous. And they're on the power play right now. Here come the Soviets. Back off number 27. Cutting in. Dropping it back. Shot just wide of the target by Homatov. And then Canada able to clear it out of there. And Kamienski number 13 has to go back. Leaves it for Homatov. Now to Beckoff. Into the zone but offside. And anyway Trent Yanni was there. 
And you see him being a little bit physical with Beckoff. Dave King, by the way, said Canada wants to be physical tonight. Not that they're going to scare the Soviets, but just to throw them off their game every little bit they can. Uh, you play the game physically, you throw anybody off the game. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh, you, you want to bump, you want to bang around a little bit. A look at Kaminsky there, who was a hero during rendezvous last year. 30 left in the penalty to Randy Gregg. It was a roughing call, by the way. 120 the time. Costa Tonop, number seven, back to get it. Here in Fatis off the point man in that KLM line up front. Larry on off, Makar off, and through top. And they drop it back to Costa Tonop. Out on the wing for Karutop. Gives it to Makar off. Back on the point, Casa Tonop centered. Burke cleared it away, and then Harpin knocked it into the corner. Here's Makarov to Fatisov. Over to Casa Tonop. Centered, deflected by Krutop. Makarov now dropping it back. And number two, Fatisov to Casa Tonop. Into Larianov, but the pass hopped over his stick. Krutop to Casa Tonop. Into Makarov. Centered, intercepted there on a good play by Schreiber, and Canada cleared away. I want to tell you about a great play Wally Schreiber just made. He was in his own end zone, had lost his stick. He switched with Von Karpin, so he was on the, the corner of the box that was closest to the bench. He went to hit Fatis up and grabbed the stick at the same time. Very heads-up play. Still 17 seconds left in the penalty. Larry on off, number 11. And unable to hold it in was Casa Tonoff. Now he feeds it to Karuta. And hacking away at him is Sherbin. Here's Casa Tonoff carrying in. Penalized player Greg is back on. Larry on off for the Soviets. Worked over by Tony Stiles. Now into the corner it is Karuta. And Canada intercepts it. Here's Gord Sherbin to Ken Berry. Long shot. Nolnikov handles that easily. And back comes Batista. No score. Canada's just killed the penalty. Puck dumped in by Kearney for the Soviet Union. Jim Waters back to clear it. Stolen in front. There's a chance, and Mogilny taken out of the play before he can shoot. And Waters starts back for Canada. Waiting off the board. Hustling in after it, Malinowski. And then back for the Soviets is Gusarov. Clearing it out of there to Mogilny. Now into center ice, onto the stick of Lomak, and he's checked. And back comes Malinowski. Into Jim Poplinski. Bumps there in the corner with Tierney. Now back of the net, Biakin, number seven. Trying to clear it. Felix held it in, shot it back to the net. Malinowski put it right through the crease. And then it's cleared by the Soviets with Felix back to get it. Here's Lomak and moving in on left wing. Trip from behind on... A big defensive play by Ken Yeremchuk. And back comes Yeremchuk. Shot it in, but Semyonov intercepts, and he comes right back for the Soviets. Burke makes the save. This is Zalapsky beating the Tambolini. Steve Tambolini dumps it in for Poplinski. He charges in after it. Couldn't get it centered now. Wadville draw, number 18. Taken out by Kravchuk. And it's cleared out on left wing for Yashin, number 25. And Randy Gregg feeds Poplinski. Canada attack. Jim Poplinski with a drive. Held the top save. Rebound. The Lapsky shot blocked. And back comes Yashin, number 25. Has Swetlov with him. Yashin trying to move in. Tried to stuff it in, but Burke held the post. Made the save. And then smothered it. Still no score in this game. What emotion Canada is playing with. I think that that's the player down there in that pile up in front of the net. And Poplinski, I don't know whether he's he's arguing. Yashin went down. He was checked down the other end of the ice, and I think that's where his problem came. He got back into the play, but then when he got back up the ice, I think he finally said, heck with this, and he sat down for a little bit. But there's going to be a penalty to Poplinski here through all of this. But Canada is playing a tremendous hockey game in terms of the emotion. Watch in front of the net now. It's a number 24, Poplinski. There it is. Penalty for Canada, number 24. 
for Jim. So Puplinski, the game's second penalty at 5:31 here of the first period. I think an indication of the emotion was that play by Yaremchuk. Well, he came back and just made a terrific play coming back. He took a cut on that. I don't know whether that was that play or the play down the other end of the ice. He really was nailed heavily up against the boards high as the play broke up the ice. High sticking the call against Poplinski. Canada may be fortunate they didn't get more than the two-minute minor run. With the injury, I mean. If, if in fact, it happened in front of the net. As I say, he was involved on the other end, too. And he was slow getting up from that. So the Soviets... On a power play where they are 12 for 25 with the man advantage and Canada clear it out of there. Pass the tone off and Patisse off the point men. But up front they have Bekoff, Jemienski, and this man, Homata. Bekoff, feeding it into Homata. Into Bekoff, back to Patisse winds up, shoots, missed the net. Homata, number 15. To Kasatonov, return to Homatov. Into the corner to Bekov. Back to Homatov. Centered, Bekov checked and cleared away, but not up. But Tisov held it in. Shooting one, and that hit a leg and bounced into the corner. Bekov tied up by Stiles in the corner. Bekov gets loose, and Homatov trying to center. Soviets on a power play. Homatov to Kaminsky, missed Homatov. In front of the net and half side, clears it away. Dan, Ron, watch how tight the Canadian box is when the puck is in deep and the Soviets are working it out of the corner. The Canadians are giving the points to the Soviets, but the Soviets aren't taking them. They're trying to make the little cute pass. Here comes Makara off to Karuta. 45 seconds left in Canada's penalty. Makara to Fatisa. Moves it to Kasatonov in front, deflected wide by Karuta in the slot. Now Makarov into Larianov. Back to Fatisov to Larianov. Other points to Kasatonov. To Fatisov shooting and Burke a pad save. 20 seconds left in the penalty. Fatisov a good play to hold it in. Into Karutov. Now to Makarov. Tries to move in. Back to Fatisov to Makarov. Side of the net to Karutov, center deflected wide as Kasatonov moved in. Canada get it, and Tim Waters cleared it out of there and cleared it too high just as Poplinski returned from the penalty box. And an excellent penalty killing job by Canada. Well, Canada has had two penalty killing situations, and they have in the two given up only three shots total. So they have done a tremendous job in the penalty killing department. And again, what Brad mentioned, that tight box and a kind of a movable box where they're managing to, to keep the Soviets either one side of the ice or the other or moving around the perimeter. Face off coming up deep in Canada's end of the rink. George Sherman out to take it. Now he steps aside and Malinowski will take it against Tierney for the Soviets. Soviets win it. Here's Fiakin. But a good play by Sherbin to steal it. Sherbin trying to get it to Malinowski. Checked in the play. Soviets come right back. And coming back is Sherbin to Malinowski. Malinowski checked from behind by Biakin on the play. And Biakin cleared it, hit his own man. Now they do clear it into center ice. And there's Yeremchuk, number 13, getting it into Sherbin. Sherbin for Canada. Checked from behind and... Back for the Soviets, the young forward Mogilny moving in on right wing. Mogilny checked and Randy Gregg cleared it. Got it into center ice to Yeremchuk and then he circled back. Back to center ice but broken up and the Soviets go back with number 29 Krovchuk starting to carry up. Cleared to center. Back comes Canada. Boisvert moving in and a backhander by Schreiber wide of the net. And then the Soviet goal is not loose. Meanwhile, Canada thought the Soviets should have had a penalty on the play. Well, a body check's a body check. I think that's allowed in the game. But the fans now are just hoping that the referee will start to try to even things up. I don't think you're going to find it. No, the, you know, the Canadian defense are doing a wonderful job. Just in that last penalty that the Canadians had to kill, 
Wally Schreiber again made an unbelievable, not an unbelievable play, the right play, where Kasatonov went to the net for that goal mode pass. And Schreiber picked him up at the top of the circle, took him all the way to the golden net, all the way to the net. Sean Burke blocked the pass as it came across, but that's what you have to have that guy in the box doing. If that defenseman goes, you go. Then the defenseman in front of the net doesn't have to worry about him. Chance for Canada from the faceoff. Boisvert shot wide. Brian Bradley, who's out with Boisvert and Schreiber on this forward line, trying to center. That's the Soviet Stelno trying to tie up the Canadian player in the corner. Canada get it loose, but can't get it centered. Serge Boisvert, one of Canada's best snipers, got it in behind the net. Boisvert again into Bradley. Brian Bradley. To Boisvert, but back is prop chuck for the Soviets. Clears it out in Yashin, who was injured earlier. Shoots it down the ice. Burke lets it go, but the Soviet player got to it first, so there's no icing. That was Kwetlov. Now Canada get it on the boards to Chris Felix, number 23. Into center ice. Taken there by Bradley. Brian Bradley. Long shot. Milnikov handles it easy. Easily cast the tone up. Round on the board to the other wing, and here's Sergei Yashin, number 25. Yashin moving in on left wing. Randy Gregg tied him up, steered him in back of the net, and this is Poplinski right back for Canada. Poplinski trying to go around for Tisov. And now the play had been called, apparently, on an offside, but it's rather difficult to hear the whistle here tonight. Players it? didn't hear it, and uh, it was very difficult for us to hear it, too, as player just on the left wing side had cut in just ahead of Koplinski as he carried the puck over the line. Koplinski made that move just before the line and put his own man offside. That's Steve Tambellini there who's playing pretty well in this kind of hockey last three years in Vancouver but a first round pick of the New York Islanders. That is junior hockey in Lethbridge, Alberta. Trent Yanni is an interesting story. This will be the 58th game that Trent Yanni has played the Soviets in the last three years. Now, he's on his way to the Chicago Blackhawks after this is over. Probably the best defenseman that Canada has, the captain of, of Canada. Here's the faceoff, won by the Soviets. Kamiensky got it to center. Randy Gregg flips it in. And Fatisov has to go back. Here's Fatisov right in front of his own net. Lost it to Bilgra, but there's the strength of Fatisov as he fought off the checker and then got it to Kamiensky. Meanwhile, play is called, and Randy Gregg and one of the Soviets, Kamiensky, collide. Yeah, and uh, they kind of looked each other in the eye, but you don't want to drop those gloves, and you don't want to get into anything that'll get you tossed out of the game, whether it's Kamiensky or Gregg. So they just looked and averted their eyes and stepped aside. A line for Canada of Malinowski, Poplinski, and Vilgra up front. Bekov. And Tambellini on the face up. I think I said Malinowski. It's Tambellini. Back to the point to Greg. A drive right on and a glove save by Milnikov. The Soviet goaltender. I'll tell you something. Poplinski's going to have to watch his, himself or he's going to cost uh, Canada dearly here. He's lost his temper twice now. Right there was another one. And that was the one thing they were concerned about with Jim Poplinski. Now watch number 24 there. Now they do a little jousting. Now if the Soviets know they can get to him, they'll try. I mean, the one thing that Canada has been noted for over the years is its lack of discipline. A recent Olympic teams have not been that way, but uh, Jim's got to remember he's not playing in the National Hockey League right now, and retaliation is not the norm. Bill Graham with a shot wide of the net. Canada trying to center. Bill Graham to the corner, comes up with the puck. Beckhoff took him out of the play. Bill Graham continues to grind on those boards, but Beckhoff comes up with it. The home atop, he missed it. Zalapski a shot. Hit Bilgra, and then Milnikov got his sticker as blocker up to knock it away. Centered to Tambellini, but pass the tone off, clears to home atop. Home atop, number 15, moves in, shoots. A bouncer that John Burke played carefully, scooped up, and just held on to. Well, again, Poplinski down on the boards on the far side, took a swing at somebody. He's on the bench now, Sean Burke there. He could be the difference before this night is over. He's the type of goaltender that can win games for you single-handedly. Well, he definitely does make it easier on a team in general because 
the Canadians will fall back and will give the perimeter shot. And you can do that if you've got a tremendous amount of confidence in the guy who's standing between those pipes. And John Burke has established that. The Canadians will give anything on the outside, but they won't give them the easy tap in. On the contrary, Dave King told us, Ron, he does not think the Soviets have that much confidence in their goaltender, Mildenka. I don't think they have confidence in either one of those guys, but they, neither one of them has really had a lot of work in this tournament so far. So this should be an edge for well, Canada. Please. This is it. Now Yanni and Karutov are getting at it. So you can see as we look there at, at Larionov. Watch him take the draw. He has got maybe the worst face-off percentage in this whole tournament. Larionov does not take a face-off very well. Watch him win it cleanly now. <laughs> no, Hampshire wins it. And here's Barry. Just over nine minutes remaining. First period, no score. Here's Sherbin, number 10. Tried to shoot it in, but it bounced over the glass and into the crowd, and we're down to 8.53 to play. Shots on goal. Canada four, the Soviet three. That despite two power plays by the Soviets. Well, Larry Onoff, just to give for the statistically minded out there, has won only 27 of 75 faceoffs coming into this game. Habshide, conversely, has won 63% of his faceoffs, 82 of 129, which tells you also with 129 faceoffs how often Dave King uses them in key faceoff situations. There's another and faceoff won by Canada. And that's one of the reasons he has the Habshide Barry Sherbin line out against that. Soviet green unit, that's his intention as much as he can. Here comes Barry. Let's a long one go. Milnikov steered it away, and Karutov starts back. Karutov, number nine, feeding it through, and offside was Biakin. And we get a stoppage in play. One of the few times you don't see all five members of the green unit out there on the ice at the same time. Right now, they had Gusarov out on defense. And now both teams make a change. Meanwhile, both teams doing a little bit of bumping and trying to get the edge of the other guy at every whistle. They are. And I think the Dave King's team and the Canadian team is doing something that the Canadians didn't do a few years ago. They're giving little cuffs to the Soviets, where a few years ago it was punches. So we got a little different strategy. But the Soviets are playing a little bit different type of hockey. The last two times the Canadians came out of their end, it was a 1-4 defense. One guy in, four guys out at center ice. They're counting on a turnover by the Canadians at center ice. Here's the lead pass for Gilney upended on the play by Harpin. He got away with it, however. Harpin now back to touch the puck, and it's icing against the Soviets. Watching the way they're making contact after the whistle reminds you a little bit about the Nordiques and the Canadians and the Oilers and the Flames. A playoff game. Well, it's just a kind of a feeling out. There's uh, the parents of Merlin Malinowski. Watching, of course, their son in Olympic play. The magician scored a goal in the last game. Of gave us an indication of why they gave him that nickname when he was in the junior playing with Sudbury. Here's Kravchak clearing it away for the Soviets. Back is Jim Waters to touch it. And that's an either icing call against the Soviet Union. There's a terrific addition, Tim uh, Waters. Uh, very much an underrated defenseman, I think, in the NHL. You played against him, Brad. He came out of the 1980 team to go to the NHL and the Winnipeg Jets. He's been very steady, not spectacular. You get him in this kind of hockey, under the scheme of the Dave King style of play, he fits in perfectly. He does, and having that international experience really helps him. He does all the right things. He moves the puck well. He's exceptionally good one-on-one. -on -one. We've only I've seen we've seen him get beat once in this tournament, but that was against France. Nobody was concentrating very hard against them. But uh, Waters will do the right thing at the right time, and that's and he's got that NHL experience now, so uh, he's got the mental toughness to play against these two, fellas. Two guys hard to beat, Brad. Uh, number 21 uh, on the on the far side, Randy Gregg, and and of course Waters when Randy's on the ice. But, either one of them they just give that rock solid feeling back there they do you know you look at uh, greg and yanni you, you think a big defenseman in the nhl like a, a bill white or a dale rawl from years ago who you just couldn't you couldn't outleg them and you couldn't uh, they had those long reach here's your rim chuck dumping it in rob chuck back for the soviets shoots it around on the board chris felix held it in into your rim chuck your rim chuck flying to center now does center but it's picked off there, now stolen by Malinowski. Couldn't get the shot away. And the Soviets go back with number 21, Tierney, beating it out on left wing for Lomakis. Number 23, Andre Lomakis. 
loses it. Got it back again, and it's dumped in. And going back is number 23, Chris Felix for Canada. Felix up the middle, getting it to Yeremchuk. Now leaves it for Brian Bradley. Ahead to Schreiber. Schreiber into Boisvert, shoots off a stick. As Kasatonov just got a piece of it. And the Soviets come right back the other way. That's Mogilny trying to go through the defense. But Randy Gregg, as you pointed out, knows how to play the man, and he did it right there. Stepped right into him. Now Zalapsky getting it in. Fatisov there to shoot it back out. Soviets, Yashin, number 25, moves in. He's checked, and Randy Gregg again flips it into center right. Here's Bradley for Canada. Into the zone, trying to leave it for Boisvert, but Semyonov intercepts. And here comes Yashin, has Kwetlov with him. But Randy Gregg stays right with the action. Now Fatisov at the point. Shoots one, deflected. Burke had a beat on it all the way. And even though Semyonov deflected it, Burke able to grab it. Well, you know, watching this, I know why the Soviets don't like playing Team Canada. I'd be frustrated if I were playing them. There's no room out there. They're jumping on the Soviets right away every time they get the puck. They're finishing their checks beautifully. Now, the Soviets may eventually go on and win this hockey game, but they'll know they've been in a struggle. It is really difficult. Meanwhile, Canada is kind of counter-punching. They're looking for the uh, opportunity, just that little turnover inside the zone that they might be able to put in the net and see if they can hold the one-goal lead. Loose puck came right in front of the net, and Burke was able to grab it as... Tambolini went to play the puck. He was kind of hooked. And the puck slid right into the Canadian goal field. Every whistle. There's a little bump. Just a little, remember, I'm here. And, and it's not only Canada is doing the Soviets. Prudov has done it a couple of times, too. They're all talking to each other. There's a certain amount of feeling out there. Oh, yeah. This is, this is like sparring. I mean, you, you, you know the game's 60 minutes long. You want to establish your trend you want to make the people aware of you that they maybe they don't want to play this game and that's what the canadians do. even the soviets are doing it they're strong guys they're not taking anything out there six minutes 16 seconds left in the opening period no score canada and the soviets here's tambolini getting ready to face off with Bekov, number 27 for the soviets Beckoff wins the draw, but the shot is blocked, and Canada come up with it, and it's cleared out by Malinowski. After it, Paplinski has the man with him. The Tambolini shoots, missed by about a foot. Canada's best chance of the game. Shot to center, and Homatov for the Soviets moving in. Homatov trying to get it in front. Knocked away by Stiles. Here's Beckoff back on the point. Shot wide of the target by Gusarov. And then Tambolini tied up his man. Here's Kaminsky. Styles knocks him down. And then to make sure, just jumped on top of him. And we get a stoppage. No score here in the first. We saw it coming. We all went downstairs and huddled in corners. When we came out, it was just a pile of rubble. Edmonton, July 1987. Fire's transport was hit by a tornado. An IBM System 38 computer was buried under this rubble. You know, I really didn't think we had a company anymore. But over the weekend, IBM salvaged our computer, got us replacement terminals, and had us back up and running by Monday. You just can't imagine the efforts that IBM has made on our behalf. With Ron Roosh and Brad Park, Dan Kelly at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. No score here in the first period. Canada and the Soviets. Here comes Mark Hatchide into the zone. To Gord Sherman, shoot one. And that hits Stelnov and bounced into the corner. And the Soviets come right back out of there. That's Larianov, but checked by Zalapsky, who fires it back in. Milnikov leaving it there. And this is Stelnov to Karuta. Missed him, and Tim Waters fires it back in. Hit the referee with it. Here's Stelno for the Soviets, back to Kravchuk. He's on the attack, number 29. Igor Kravchuk trying to center for Karuta. Now Karuta flips it into the corner. Burke back of the net will shoot it on the glass himself, gets it to Sherbin. Couldn't get it out. Here's Larianov near the blue line. Shoots Burke, a six save on a shot he just saw at the last second. 
And then it's cleared by Canada. Well, it looked easy. That was a tremendous save because he did not see that puck until the very last instant and then got that pad out and the stick and kicked it away. But Larry Onoff had just turned and just drifted a little floater towards the net. Here it is now. And this is a good view of it, too. Just a little floater. And then that instant, he saw it. He kicked it out. His out in front was Ken Berry, number nine for Canada, screening off his view. He's got tremendous reaction. I was watching Ken Berry on that last shift, and him and Makarov were, were doing a heck of a dance. They should have been in the figure skating. They, he had a hold of them. They had their sticks locked. They were together for a good 20 seconds out there. Here's Tierney against Yaremchuk, deep in Canada's end of the rink. Half the tone off at the point of shot. That's blocked into the corner. Lomakin tied up on the play by Tony Stiles, and then Canada's Von Carpenter. Flips the puck into center ice. Here comes your rim chuck, but back with Fatisov to intercept. He gives it to McGilney. And then it shot to center ice. Yeah, the tone off's on the limp. He's heading off to the bench now. That collision hurts. Canada back in their own zone. Number four, Tony Styles, wearing a different style helmet since getting that concussion in the early part of this tournament. Back is Trendiani for Canada. On the board. Yeremchuk, number 13. And Yeremchuk carries outside the line, checked by Tierney. And here's a chance for Mogilny, moves in, missed the net. He had Lomakin with him, but elected to shoot, and he missed by about a foot. Stiles getting a little too anxious at the blue line there to throw a body check, and he set up a two-on-one, and Mogilny just missed. There's Soviets on the attack, Semyonov tied up on the play. Randy Gregg comes up with it, couldn't get it out as Gutsarov held it in. Into Swetlov. Swetlov knocked down by Zalepsky. And here's Zarley Zalepsky for Canada. Fires it in. Biakin back to get it, but Bois there knocked him off the puck. In to help out is Canada's driver. They drop it back to Zalepsky. Behind the net to Bois there, he missed it. And Gusarov clears it into center ice to Yashin. Now to Semyonov. Over to Swetlov. Shoots Burke a six save. And it deflects up into the crowd, and we're down to 249. Remaining in a tension packed first period. Tension isn't the word. You realize that at this stage with these two clubs, we've got a grand total here in the first period of 11 shots. 6 5 favor the Soviets right at this moment. Only one great scoring play, really, and that was Tambolini from Poplinski. Here's this uh, chance, and had it all the way. The other one, Larry Onoff let that little floater go that uh, was kicked away by Burke. He saw it in the last moment, but the best scoring play was clearly the Canadian one, Tambolini getting in front of the net on that rush from the blue line of Canada all the way up into Soviet territory by Poplinski. There's a little pushing and shoving between Chris Felix and Homatop. Off to the right of the faceoff and the referee comes over that way now just that little jabbing that both teams are doing to try and get the upper hand back to off, battling on the faceoff got it Kamienski shot blocked now home atop but he's taken out of the play by Felix and Poplinski cleared it to Vilgra Juan Vilgra nice behind the back pass to Tambellini and Canada able to clear it out of the zone Here's Homatop, number 15. Bill Graw ties him up. Homatop, centered. Loose in front, couldn't get the shot off. Here's Promchuk, shot block. And it bounces back to center, and Stelnov is there for the Soviets. Over to Kropchuk. And he just dumps it down the ice. Hustling back for Canada, Tim Waters. That's icing, and then Bekov takes Waters out of the play. And we're down to 2.06 left in the first period. This kind of reminds me, Brad, of two sumo wrestlers kind of a hold of each other, and they're once trying to get a little edge, and they're kind of pushing and pulling, and, and nothing's happening, and nobody's giving an inch, and, and a little intimidation, and a little glaring, but nothing really is, is, is happening out there. And if you love this defensive style of hockey, it's being played letter perfect out there tonight. Well, the interesting thing about the, when you get a, a low sh uh, shot game like this, a low scoring game, is you always know that one goal, any goal at any time, can be the, 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 the difference. So the, the pressure just brings more drama to this, and you can feel that the butterflies are gone in these teams. They are ready to go after one another. Here's Makarov. This is the line you have to stop. They do most of the Soviet scoring, and Styles broke it up there. 
And back comes Hampshire into Sherman. Shoots. Milnikov got a glove on it. And then it ricocheted wide of the target. Soviets come right back. Larry on off to Makarov. Leaving it there for Fatisov, who comes up with the play. Then he missed his pass to Larionov. Pinching in is Fiakin number six. Got it into the corner. Barry can't clear it. Here's Fiakin to Larionov. Larionov got away from Stiles to Krutov. Big save, Burke. And Makarov missed on the rebound. That's the Soviet best chance to this point. Got behind Burke, but Yanni was right there and cleared it out of harm's way. But he's off back to get it to Makarov. Just over a minute to play in the first period. Makarov trying to feed it through, and Greg was there like the Rock of Gibraltar to break it up. Here's Tierney trying to carry in. Now Mugilny and Malinowski ran into him. Bayakin fires it in. Burke lets it go because it will be icing as Zalapski goes back to touch it. 48 seconds left and a little after the whistle action again with the youngster Mogilny, one of their stars of the future, involved for the Soviets. All right, let's watch this now. Here, what? here it is. Yanni got himself a little out of sorts there when he fell down. He got back into the goal mouth, but here's the shot. It went off and rolled through the goal mouth on a backhand, and there was Yanni who positioned himself quickly back in the goal mouth. And he cleared it out of harm's way, Brad. Well, Trent Yanni got cut by Larry Arnoff, and you wouldn't see it unless you, you look for it. But Larry Arnoff had a hold of Yanni's stick behind the net. So when the puck came there, Yanni couldn't use his stick to pitch fork or get on. And Larry Arnoff held his stick, took the puck, skated away from him, and then just threw it in front of Kruchov. A little thing like that, just letting some guy tie up your stick at the wrong time can produce a good scoring opportunity. 48 seconds left in the opening period. No score. Big face up as Charity, number 21, takes it against Brian Bradley. Bradley gets the draw to Felix, but the shot blocked. McGilney has a break. Waters chasing McGilney. Burke the save on McGilney. And then Felix able to clear it out. Canada got the center. Krob Chuck knocks it down. Back the other way comes Tierney. Tierney all tied up by Waters. And now Canada's Barry or Bradley got at the center. Dubois Bear to Bradley. In Dubois Bear. Cuts in. Shoots. And that hits the skate of Krob Chuck and bounced away. 15 seconds left in this opening period. Krob Chuck ahead for Lomakin. Wrist shot right on. Burke very confident, makes the save. And it's cleared by Felix to the line, but not out. Three seconds left. They just drop it back to Burke. And this opening period is over. No score, Canada and the Soviets. Soviets out shooting Canada in the period. 10 to 6. But a scoreless game after. Well, the green unit is back and forth to start this period. And again, Habscheid, Sherman, Berry. Yanni and Stiles out to face him. Chance that Donoff was shaken up, but he's out there and controls the puck right now as Batisov gave it to him. Pass the Donoff to Karutov, trying to get away from Sherman, and Stiles is back for Canada to get it. Number four, Stiles loses to Krutov. Stiles fell, trying to cover up on the puck. Knocked loose, and Sherman has to come back. Sherman out to Barry. Knocked it by Kasatonov, and Larionov will have to chase back for the Soviet Union. Igor Larionov, and as he touches the puck, icing called against Canada. Igor Larionov, by the way, he did not instantly become the center between Makarov and Karutov. He took over the job there in the 1981-82 season. Viktor Shluktov uh, had been the centerman on that line. Here's a little more of the... That's the uh, dance team stuff. I was telling you about. No, that's not bad. <laughs> now, who's going to let go first? That's <laughs> you don't let, I will yeah, let go of you. Go. Just, says, that's enough of that. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a pretty good sequence there. Huh. Here's Tambellini on a face-off against Semyonov deep in Canada's zone. Face-off won by Canada. Felix. Off the boards, but Big Sam Yanoff is there to flip it into the corner. Greg came over to take him. Now Yashin out in front. Shoots, he scores! Number 25, Sergei Yashin, comes from behind the net. And the Soviets at the 45-second mark of the second period lead 1-0. 
Well, you're not going to see quickness like that very often. Yashin, with a tremendous burst, he went one way and then went the other. As the puck goes behind the net, oh, we missed it completely on the, that one. We'll get another. Here's a good view of it now. And as he comes out quickly, and Burke got over, but just that fraction late, and it's into the net. A big decision in front of the net by Zarley Zalapski. He guessed that uh, Ashen was going to come out to one side, and he just went right around the other side and did the wrap around. Here are the Soviets on the attack. Semyonov in to try and get it. Zalapski quickly clearing it out. And Randy Craig beats Bill Graw at center. Leaves it for Zalapski. Moves in his shot wide of the net. Bill Graw at the right point. Shoots one wide of the target. Now Zalapski missed it and getting it is Sweatlop. He has Yashin with him. Sweatlop cuts behind the net. Greg is after him and knocked him down. And Bill Graw back to get it for Canada. Claude Bill Graw into center ice to Zalapski, but Biakin intercepts that. Now the puck loose in the neutral ice area, and now it's called back on a two-line offside pass. The scoring play, Yashin, is second of the Olympics from Semyonov. 45 seconds to turn. Well, that quick goal, there you see Yashin going uh, to the bench. Was not in the Canada Cup last year or the World Championships in 1987, but he came back for his best year. One of four forwards from Moscow Dinamo who are here. Of course, most of the team made up of the Central Army players. Here is Chris Felix at center ice, firing it around on the board. Back to get it is Schreiber. Couldn't hold it in. Now Schreiber into the other corner. To Bradley, he's checked. Waters had pinched in, but Homatop cleared it out of there. Canada shoot it right back in on its offside at the Soviet blue line as you look at number eight of Canada, Brian Bradley. Well, he's going to stay here, I would imagine, with the Calgary Flames as soon as this one is over. With Calgary last year, in 40 games he did play with the Flames. He scored 28 points. Very smart hockey player. Montreal Canadian fans might remember his father. He played in the Canadians organization for a while in the minor league system. His name was Walter Bradley. Brian Hales from Kitchener, Ontario. Here's a long shot off the... Canadian defense stick up over the glass and into the crowd. We're talking about the Soviets as we look at one of their young up-and-coming stars, Propchuk. My understanding, Ron, is they've made seven changes from the team we saw in the Canada Cup and I guess the team that was on the ice at Izvestia. Well, they, made a, they were experimenting a lot during the Izvestia Cup and uh, a lot of those names that you see not there anymore were names we hadn't seen before in any case. But uh, this team is not the type of team that changes a lot. Here's Kropchuk back to get it. Clears the Kaminsky on the board. Now to Igor Stelnov, number four, who fires it in. Burke's there to clear it. Waters trying to knock it out. Here's Beckoff trying to make a play. Couldn't and Boisvert back for Canada. But a poke check at the blue line by Kropchuk broke it up. Here's Beckoff. A little wily center iceman, wiry. Shot in now by Kropchuk and bounces back out, and here's Beckoff there to pick it up. To Pasatona. And he drops it to Batisov. Batisov shoots one, blasted that one wide of the net, and that shot had some smoke on it, didn't it? I thought it was going to go through the boards. <laughs> really leaned into it. Here's Tim Waters trying to clear it up. Batisov back to get it. That's icing against Canada. Good grief, I'd hate to be standing in front of a shelf like that. Well, he just came up and he was given all that space and he just came across the line. The defense was backing up and he leaned into it. So it would have gone through Sean Burke if it had hit him. Well, that's one of the problems. You know, if you give a guy a free ride all the way through center ice and he's got time to wind up, especially a guy with the strength of the tee off you know he's going to get to that blue line, and that's like facing a, a wrist shot from the from the dot. I mean, you don't see it until it hits something, and that was a, a perfect example of that. Tierney against your rim, Chuck. Soviets win the draw, but the shot by Mogilny is blocked, and Von Karpin able to kick the puck into center ice. Dostatonov has it there, now giving it to Lomakin. Back to Fatisa. Now down right wing comes Tierney. Trying to go around Zalapski, centered in front of shot on the net is knocked loose as the Soviet player had been knocked in there. And that 
stop play. Now look at the effort Randy Gregg made in blocking that shot. He's just getting up now. But he went down, and he was about to stop that with his head. Here it is again. The play will come into the slot. Now watch Randy Gregg, number 21. Forget about the net going up. Here it comes down. Now Gregg just goes down, and that's not the way you want to take a shot. You sprawl. You sprawl right into the shot like that. Well, you're asking for a lot of trouble and a sore jaw. Well, that's true. You know, sometimes you, you've got to make a decision to block a shot in a, in, a, in a fraction of a second, and sometimes there is no method to your madness. And that's madness. <laughs> that's dedication. <laughs> that's Larry wanting to win. Yeah. Larry on off, Garut off, and Makar off up front. Back on defense, they're trying to team them with Musar off and Biakin as they still work on the Canadian goal tree. Apparently something wrong with the ice right at the left goal post that the Lions have now worked on. Talk about the Larianov line. They have been the top scoring line in the Soviet Union for seven straight years now, ever since they were put together. As I said, Shluktov used to be the center. Lou Nanny spent about three years trying to get Shluktov over here and at one point thought he was going to get him for the Minnesota North Stars, but that fell through. Here's Canada with Kenberry down left wing. Into center ice to Sherbin. He's checked and now half shot. Over to Trentiani. Now to Berry into the zone. Larry on up there to clear it up. Flipped in by Yanni and controlled now by Sherbin. Sherbin shot it up the ice, but right on to Biakin stick. And here's Larry on up. Larry on up. Drop pass. Poked in front. Kicked that and kicked wide by Makara. Lusar off at the point. I thought that puck had come outside the blue line, but they didn't whistle it down, and Burke had to make the pay. Uh, Pepper Slayer once again. one nothing the Soviets leading if you look at Sergei Makarov. What a long and great career. Some there, great moves here. But there goes Ken Burry. There's that dance team going. Now watch Makarov. Makarov, he steals the stick, pulls it out of his hand. He says, I'm going to put it where he can't get it, and he drops it on the back of the net. Ever seen so much lumber lying around? We've had six or seven players now lose six. Just lose them, not break them. So Makarov there with a great effort. The kick it there with Karutov just off the side of the net. That's very nearly cost Canada. And he was tied up completely. Still managed to get a, a pass away. A foot pass, mind you. A soccer pass. But there's Benyana. They have him listed at 6'2". But boy, he looks bigger than that as you see him stand out there to take the face off. Number... 30 for the Soviets. Abshide and Semyonov. Waters trying to clear it for Canada. Hampshire got it to Vildrum. Quad Vildrum from Charlesburg, Quebec, moving in. Steered into the corner by Stelnov. Now Tambellini back of the net. Did get it in front, but Stelnov there to intercept. Delno to Yashin, who has scored the only goal. Into Semyonov. Hooked that by Felix, and now Poplinski comes over. He bumps with Trobchuk. Jim Waters now with the puck. Round on the boards to Chris Felix. And Felix able to clear it out into center ice. Delno. Shoots at the Canada's blue line. Jim Waters has it there. Waters skated off by Svetlov. Now Bill Graf for Canada, but Kovchuk ties him up. Back into the Soviet zone, and here's Igor Stelnov, number four. Quickly out on the board. Shot by Kovchuk into center ice. Canada break it up. Back they come. Long shot by Bradley. Bad save by Milnikov. Soviets clear it, held in again by Canada. In behind the net for Boisbert. He gets it to Bradley. Bradley centers. Schreiber a shot. Blocked by Stelno. Schreiber still after it. And then it's cleared by Kaminsky out of there. Folks thought that the Soviets could have had a penalty, but none was called. And this is icing as Greg goes back to get it. Soviet leading here in the second period, one to nothing. While the country is going to sleep, Canada's largest courier air fleet is being loaded. 
ready to span the sky from coast to coast, serving cities, towns, and communities all across this great land. Purolator's investment in resources and technology makes them the fast, dependable, all-Canadian courier company. Why waste time with anyone else? Call us. With Brad Park and Ron Roos, Dan Kelly at the Saddle Dome. Quick shot by your rim shot from the faceoff. Milnikov stops that, trying to center. Malinowski, let the Soviets break it up and clear it out of there. And here's Fatisov carrying in to Bekov. Yeremchuk will get a penalty. Bekov took a dive, but they'll call a penalty anyway on Yeremchuk, and he can't believe it. I told you that earlier that that Bekov was a wily little guy, and I don't think there's any question. He took a 9.9 .9 dive, but the referee didn't spot the dive, didn't spot the hook. Well, he, he saw a stick go up around the face of Yeremchuk as he was going over the line. Here it is. There's the stick. You can see it up. Now, Beckhoff just simply went down on the play. I don't know how much of the hook was in there. Yeah, I think he's been called for high sticking, not for, for a hook. And Beckhoff, what he did was make sure that the referee, the referee saw it. Again, the referee is Andy Koskinen of Finland. Don't want the sticks up. Uh, you, you can have all the holding, and apparently that's, he's letting that go, and he's letting a lot of the, the pushing go and everything else. But the sticks go up, and that's when, they, when the penalties are called. So the Soviets, with that strong power play, 12 for 26, but 0 for 2 in this game, have the man advantage and lead it one to nothing. Here's Homatov into the corner, side of the net to Bekov. Back on the point. Here's Biakin into the side of the goal to Homatov. Got it in front, shot by Beckhoff, right on, and Burke comes up big and held on. And then Ferry jousts in front of the net with Homatov. All right, here's the play. Watch the stick of Uremchuk up around the up around the face. And Beckhoff, as I say, we don't have a good enough view to see whether he got it into the face or not but it was enough to attract the referee who was on the other side of the ice and looking straight at it, and he called it. I'm not saying it wasn't high sticking. I'm just saying Beckhoff made it. Oh, he, he added to it. I mean, uh, but the, uh, again, emphasize it. Make it look good. He made it look pretty good, too. Eh? They're going to get a, I think, I don't know what's going on here. Is the timeout been called, or they just no, they're just getting move, organized? They're going to move the face off outside the blue line for some reason. Bekov, Kamensky, and Homatop up front. Kusarov will be one point man again, along with Biakas. Canada with Trent Yanni on defense with Styles, and Yanni fires it down the ice. Abshide and Boisvier are the penalty killers as Kusarov is back to get it. Over for Biakas. Now to number 13, Valerie Kamensky. Off the board to Bekov. To Gusarov. Now to Kaminsky. Trying to get it in front, knocked away by Canada and cleared out of there. Look at that, Biakin come back to get the loose puck. Well, they're wheeling right now. Here's Homotov. In front to Beckhoff and Burke got a piece of that. That Beckhoff worked his way into the slot and made a deflection. Now Homotov to Beckhoff, he scores! Same combination again. And Beckhoff on the power play makes it two to nothing for the Soviets. Well, Canada outmanned in the slot. Beckhoff was alone in front twice. He got the deflection right on Burke the first time, and on the second time, Beckhoff was able to steer it right up top, Brad. Well, watch how Homatov realizes it's happening in front of the net. Two guys are covering one guy. He goes out. Yanni slides, but what happened? He made a perfect pass around the feet of Trent Yanni. A very heads-up play by the part of Beckhoff because he realized that two guys were covering one guy in front of the net. That means that Yanni was going to be outmanned uh, for a goal mouth pass. That Beckhoff is like a water bug out there. He's 5'8", 160 pounds, and he's here, there, and everywhere. A lot of people like to com compare him with uh, Ken Lindsman of the Bruins, who has that same style and attitude on the ice. Now Canada down 2 to nothing. a power play goal. Beckhoff 
from Homadop and Biakin, 7.22 the time. Here's Stelno trying to shoot it in. Burke at the side of the net was going to clear it. And then Cambellini took the man out of the play and let Burke play the puck. Well, there's Beckoff getting a little treatment. A whack on the chin, apparently, through all of that. Now they're going to come out of this one with some bruises. You see, Styles doesn't have a stick. And that's why he went to the man in front and Beckoff went to the side. And he realized that there's Styles' stick. So Beckoff knew that he had some room, and that's why he went to the net with a puck. I mean, Homatov and made the pass to Beckoff. What's happening out there, Brad? We see so many sticks flying on the ice. They're hanging on to each other and whacking each other and, and doing everything, and the sticks are being dropped. Well, what's happening is you're in front of that net, and you to tie up a guy, if they're physically strong, the Russians, you grab their stick because that's as good as knocking them on the rear end sometimes and doesn't call a penalty. So they grab your stick, and now one guy pulls the stick out of the other person's hand. Here's Lomack in at center. Bill Rob checked him. Trying to fight up ice is Tambellini. He gets checked. And now back the other way is Wilmackin shooting it into the Canadian zone. Waters for Canada. Canada trailing two to nothing. Bill Graw to Chris Felix. Canada noted for their defense and also noted for their lack of offense. So this is a tough situation they face now. No icing on the play as the Canadian player Poplinski got down in a hurry to play the puck. Now Hampshire dropping it back for Greg. Cleared into center. Here's Patisov trying to break in. Patisov to Karutov in the slot. Weak shot. Burke able to stop it, even though it was wide of the net. And then hold on to it. This is the game plan that Canada would like, Ron. Well, they don't like being behind. Uh, it's, it's difficult for any hockey team to come from behind. Triply difficult for Team Canada to come from behind because they just aren't that kind of a team. They don't have that much offense. They need a break now. They need something to go in the net for them, something that can get them going. Now, Canada has not scored a medal round goal since 1980. Dan Del Vee scored a goal then. So they are, are actually it goes back even further than that. They didn't score a medal round goal since uh, 1968, I guess, because they missed a couple of uh, Olympics and 80 when they didn't reach the medal round. 84, they were shut out in both games in the medal round that they played. Here's Randy Gregg working it over on the far side. Now shot to center and taken over at the Soviet line by Fatisov to Larianov to Makarov. Makarov, wrist shot, first. Club save. And he held on to it, and then Randy Gregg spins Makarov around in the goal street. Burke flashing up that left hand to make an excellent save. Oh, there's Makarov. What a great career he has had since the day his brother, who was playing for the Central Army, brought him into the Central Army dressing room and introduced him to his hero, Valerie Harlamov. He went on to <laughs> become Harlamov's replacement as the annual all-star left winger in the Soviet Union. Chicken tries to work on this Soviet team. It hasn't worked so far. They're leading 2 nothing. Here's Patisov. To Karutov behind the net. Tied up on the play by Hampshire. Now Makarov. To Patisov. Into the corner to Karutov to Larianov. Other point. Pass the tone off band on the shot, but then. Play is called as Canada's net had been knocked loose again. Now well, more tough sledding in front of that Team Canada net. I'll tell you, you know when it, if you get in there, it's like getting into into the trenches. Well, you know the the old coach's expression: you got to take a guy to the net, and that's been taken literally here tonight. You got to take him to the net, through the net, making sure that guy does not get into a play. They stop. Will be to the left of Canada's goal. Shots on goal in the game. The Soviets 17, Canada 8. Both of the Soviet goals in this period. Soviets have outshot Canada 7 to 2 in the second period. You can see them coming on in the last couple of minutes of the first, and it's carried right over here to the second. Here's Hampshire checked by Waters. And Winnipeg Jets defenseman Tim Waters starts to carry out of there. Up the middle for Schreiber. Schreiber couldn't get around the big defenseman Biakin. And back of the net is Gusara. And this is Semyon up, but gets Yashin at center. And Chris Felix knocks it away. Into Bradley. Bradley for Canada.
Bradley shoots and a big save by the goaltender Milnikov. Samyanov clears it out of there. And here comes Swetlov. But the only man back, Waters, played him perfectly and broke it up. And Tim Waters tries to get it going the other way. To Bradley. Back to Waters, but Samyanov at center ice flips it back in. Here's Fiakin coming in, but it's offside. And Canada's blue line, and we're down to 942 left in the second period. Let's look in and listen at the Soviet bench if we can. They're pretty quiet guys right now. They've got the two-nothing lead. Come on, Victor, say something. Or Eager. Is he going to be the next coach of the Soviet Union? Many people think so. Well, in the foreground. Buck cleared in by the Soviets. Zalapsky back to get it. Out on the left wing side for Malinowski. Now to Zalapsky. Back to Malinowski. Head manning to Yeremchuk. Yeremchuk trying to go around Kravchuk. Leaves it there. Comes back to Yeremchuk. He's tied up on the play. Couldn't get the shot off. And Kaminsky cleared it into center ice. And Malinowski back to get it. Malinowski to Carpen. Now back to Malinowski. Into Carpen. But Kravchuk was there defensively. And the Soviet Homotop feeding to Kamiensky to Homotop. Broken up by Zalapsky. He hit mans it on left wing, and here comes Malinowski. Into the zone, trying to get it to Bilgrom. Claude Bilgrom tries to center. Yeremchuk in the other corner, but still no ball over him, and Bekhev is able to carry out. Number 27, Bekhov. Moving in, shoots, perk a save. And then he covered up. And then Bekhov. Trying to tug away at Randy Gregg, threw his glove away. Well, the main line, the green unit, has been tied up pretty well, but the other guys are now starting to come on. They have scored the goals. Here's Beckoff. He's got that great speed, fakes at the defense. Got it off his back foot, Brad. Well, he had to. That's when you, you know, you, the quicker you can release a puck, the, the more you can catch a goal turn. When you're going over there and you're off balance and that defense has got a stick on you, you better be able to pull the trigger or you're never going to get a shot away. And you'll find that in the, you know, when, uh, hockey players, young hockey players, you teach them to step into the puck because they don't have the strength in their wrist. But as they get older, they should be able to snap that shot off of either foot at any time. But he's off a drive and Burke a stick save and it's a flex up and then Felix in front of the net. Knock McGilney on the seat of his fence. Well, the little kid's getting a welcome into this kind of hockey. Alexander McGilney, who they think is just going to, in the Soviet Union, they, they think he's going to be a great, great player. He just turned 19 during the tournament. Now watch McGilney just took a little shot from Burke. And a little extra shot there from Felix. Down he goes. Great skater, great shot. Youngest player on the team right now and a star in this year's World Junior Tournament in Moscow. Face off in Canada's zone, won by Hampshire. Back of the net to Waters. Here's Mogilny intercepting it again. Poplinski trying to tie him up, and now Chris Felix. Back of his own goal. Felix, long lead pass to Hampshire, and Milnikov out of the net, able to cover up on it, and then a flash at Hampshire. I think it was by Fatisov. Now McGilney pushes it half shot. Well, then Milnikov came out of the crease and he was going to have a say. Well, there's two big guys. I wonder how they'd fare if they ever have a set two. Fatisov, by the way, will fight. He was in uh, one of the rare brawls in the World Hockey Championships. Wound up with a big suspension along with the two coaches. Dave Johnson, the U.S. coach here, was the coach at that time for the U.S. team. Jimmy Johnson in Pittsburgh. Neil Sheehy, former Calgary Flame, all involved in this deal. And they say Fatisov handled himself very well, thank you, for a guy who doesn't fight at all. Speaking of fighting, three penalties in this game all to Canada. One cost them a goal. The last goal by Beckoff was on a power play. Soviets have not had a penalty in the game. Buck is cleared down the ice by the Soviets. Jim Waters back to get it. Eight minutes and two seconds left in the second period. Felix into center ice to Bill Graf. Trying to move in with Poplinski, but it's broken up. And called him an offside anyway at the Soviet blue line. We don't have a mic on him. <laughs> 
I don't think we better have a mic on him either. He's pretty upset, and I don't blame him. I don't think that was an offside. I got a feeling that uh, Jim Popensky said to Petisov in the NHL, I hope you get your money. I want to see you, son. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you regularly. Hampshire, <laughs> Perry, and Sherbin out against the KLM line for the Soviets. Garutov, Larionov, and Makarov. Now Makarov, and now back to the play. We're going to get a penalty, an interference call against Fiakin. First penalty of the game against the Soviets. The Canadian power play coming up right here. There's only one reason, one simple, honest, one excellent reason why you have made La Bat 50 so amazingly popular. Quite simply, it's the care and attention that we put into brewing one of the best beers in the world. Penalty against the Aachen. Let's see what Canada can do here. Well, they don't score a lot of goals, but I think now is the time. Three for 16 on the power play during this tournament. Canada center, Hapshide shoots. Oh, and he shot it just wide. Great chance by Hapshide. Barry trying to center again. Hapshide in to help out in the corner. He gets dumped. And Patisov knocks down. The Canadian player paying thought that there should have been a penalty as Barry was dumped, but the referee let it go. Loose puck stolen here by Karutov, but he's thinking in defensive terms and comes all the way back to center. Now he'll attack, and Barry takes him out of the play. Hapshad couldn't get it by Fatisov. Here's Makarov. Back into his own zone to Gusarov. Over to Patisov. And the Soviet captain fires it down the ice. 105 left in the penalty. Felix number 23 for Canada. Quickly to Schreiber. Now into center ice to Bradley who fires it in. Coming in. Trying to center is Schreiber. Soviets clear it back out. Felix for Canada. Now it's Tambellini shooting it in. In comes Schreiber. Still no there. Puck came in front of the net. Gusarov cleared it. And here's Svetlov, number 16. He's checked from behind. And back comes Bradley for Canada. They fire it in. Trying to dig in is Schreiber back to the net. But Semyonov comes up with it. And clears it down the ice in just 16 seconds. Left in the penalty after the early good shot in the midst of the net. Canada's had nothing on this power Almost play. Almost like they shot their bolt, isn't it? Rob Chuck for the Soviets. Trying to beat home atop. Burke out of the net to play that one. Leaves it for Trentiani. Cleared, intercepting Biakin just out of the penalty box. Biakin's weak shot and Zalewski cleared it away. Home atop over to get it. Trying to center. Here's Beckoff. Back of the net. Biakin. Tried to center, but Yeremchuk intercepts. In Yeremchuk to Vildraw at center. He just tipped it into the zone, and Fatisov is back for the Soviets. Vildraw into Porchek. Does a good job. Knocks Fatisov down, but Bekov came back to help out, and the Soviets clear it out of there, and will take the icing go as Tim Waters goes back to touch it. Well, we've got 19,000 people here in the Olympic Saddle Dome right at the moment. Uh, and all of them a little bit on their hands at the moment, waiting for something to happen. But this good chance, that's Habshai just missing the net. You've got to score on those chances. If you don't, you know, this is the, only, the, the old line. You're only in a top flight game against a top flight opponent. You're only going to get so many scoring chances a game. And if you don't capitalize on them, you're out to lunch. The Soviets have had maybe four great chances have scored on two of them well that's what they'll do you know they'll, they'll kind of come at you and come at you when they want they will not come at you when the the offensive structure is not good they've got to want to outman you to get that good scoring turn here's Kearney and mcgillney on a breakaway big save sean burke on the youngster mcgillney was in alone 
And it's cleared down the ice with Kasatonov back to get it. Over second. on left wing for Gusara. Second time Mogilny's been stoned by Burke on breakaways. Tierney trying to work it in. Gets help from Kaminsky. Malinowski tying him up. Jim Waters over on the board. Four players jam up. And it's held there, and we get a stoppage. Big, big save by Sean Burke. Well, he just stands tall, literally and figuratively. Big guy, 6'3". Here's McGillney coming in now, and a nice setup on the play as it's set in by Cherney. Keep your yep. eye on Burke here. Watch, he just stood his ground. He did not flinch. He did, you know, he'd backed in far enough. He knew he had backed in far enough. He says, he's got to shoot it. If he doesn't, I'm going to my right because he's going there. Still got his eye tech equipment from the World Junior Championship. He's the only Soviet to wear the full face guard. Here's Trentiani for Canada. 4.33 left here in the second period. Now Tony Stiles, number four, crossing center and dumping it in. Batisov trying to shoot it back up. There's Schreiber held it in. His shot turned aside by Milnikov. And now on the attack, Larionov, a quick shot. And that gave Burke difficulty, but he kicked out his right leg, made the save, and here's Frentiani. Flips it in with Batisov back to get it. Over to Kasatonov, into center ice to Larionov. Larion off to Karutov. Zalapski there to bump him off the puck. Zarli Zalapski. Number one draft choice of the Pittsburgh Penguins a couple of years ago to Schreiber. Milnikov handles that. And Fatisa. Trying to carry out, was in trouble. Gives it to Kasatonov, to Yashin. He scored the Soviets' first goal. Trying to get around Greg. Couldn't. Here's Makarov. Centered in front. Carried away by Poplinski. Jim Poplinski from the Calgary Flames misses Tambellini with a pass and Kropchuk there to clear it away. And Poplinski back to get it to Trentiani. Now into center ice for Tambellini. Shoot, Milnikov, save, rebound. Quickly cleared away by Kropchuk before Tambellini could get it. And the Soviets shoot it into the Canadian zone. Waters back after it. Now to Poplinski. Gamienski held it in. Here's Felix for Canada. Soviet showing at this point they know how to play a little bit of defense, too. Well, they've shut them down now, and the game is just getting into that kind of a stage. Canada really needs a break now. They need something that'll get them started, put the Soviets back on their heels a little bit. Home job doing some fancy stick handling. Home job. Knocks the Canadian defenseman down, but Canada come up with the puck, and here's Poivre. Couldn't get it out of the zone. Kamienski held it in. Chris Felix back to get it. Losing. Here's Homatop, centered, but Poivre intercepts. Here he comes with Schreiber. Pass to Schreiber. Drop Chuck back defending on the play, and he just rides Schreiber out of the play, and Beckoff able to clear it. Here's Kamienski. Moves in, and the play is offside. Well, Gilney in ahead of the play over on right wing, and we're down to 1.59 left in the second period. A second period that's been dominated by the Soviets. Uh, Cliff Fletcher watching Brian Bradley, a couple of other players on the ice that he'd like to have. And as we mentioned, about 19,000 people here in the Saddle Dome. There are anywhere between 30 and 50,000 who couldn't get in here who are down at the plaza. And the medal ceremonies are going on down there. Boy, do they jam that place every night. Part of the celebrations in Calgary, and what a celebration it's been for the last week and a half. And then a laser show, plus fireworks every evening, really has this town excited, plus all the visitors. Here's your rim, Chuck. Tell you what it excites the folks a little more would be a goal by Canada run. Well, I'm a little surprised at how quiet this crowd is here in the, this building. They have not really gotten into the game uh, you know it's almost like the tension got the better of them and they're on the edge of their seats they really never got into it from the beginning and now trailing two to nothing in Canada could do with a little support down there and uh, they're all they're all they're getting is the kind of moral support without the vocal side of it well what's happening is the team Canada has not really been getting in the last 10 minutes any good scoring opportunities other than the power play chance by Schreiber so if you don't get the two on one or the three on two it's hard to bring people to your feet 
They stop one by the Soviets at the point to Sara, but now they rule the puck was dropped unfairly, so they'll do it over again. Soviets have scored two goals in this period. Yashin at the 45 second mark, and then a power play goal by Bekov at 722. And they've controlled it since that point. Here's Yurimchuk. Down right wing. Cutting in. Got it in front. Mildakoff a save. Soviets quickly clear it. Yanni at the point. Firing it in. Yurimchuk back of the net. Couldn't get it. Now Harpin centered. But that's cleared away by Cherney for the Soviets and shot down the ice. One of the few offensive thrusts that Canada's had. That provided by Yurimchuk on that last rush. Canada again. Bill a long pass for him, missed him, and it's icing as Gusarov is back to touch it. Not very often you see a Soviet out skated, but uh, Gusarov there with Yurenchuk coming down on him just went by him on on the way down towards the goal. Uh, Gusarov, man, they kept the lane blocked. There wasn't a tremendous <laughs> chance there. Kind of a one-hander for Milnikov. Well, I've chased Ken Yurenchuk and uh, Yurenchuk, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you right now, that man, I never went fast enough to hurt myself. That man goes too fast. Mm. Larianov, Kurutov, and Makarov with Batisov and Kasatonov. And as Canada has done for much of the game, they send out Hapshide, Berry, and Sherbin. Now, McGilney, the coach, Dr. McGilney. McGilney's upset. The coach is really upset. Was that, a, was that a pat to go get him or, or don't do it again? Not from Tikhanov, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> go get him. That was, what'd you do? I think he said, the coach are whacking at it. Here's Greg trying to clear it. We're in the final minute of the second period. Randy Greg trying to move it out of there. Held in by the Soviets, but now they whistle it down because of a hand pass. 47 seconds left here in the second period. 2-0 in favor of the Soviet Union. That's a Calgary draft choice right there. I don't know whether he'll ever wind up with, with Fletcher or not. I'm sure you'd like to have him. I'd like to see, uh, I don't know if the National Hockey would allow it, but I'd like to see Calgary keep the big rink and see if it really makes a difference in the standings. And I'm glad I'm out of the league. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that. It's fine for you since you've retired. Here's Greg trying to feed it to Hampshire. Shot in. Now there's a tripping call as the Canadian player Zalapski upended and Soviets will get a penalty. Handed on the delayed call trying to center it. And now as Kasatonov comes up with it. Now a tripping penalty. Makarov, Danny. What happened was uh, Zalapski was moving in. Makarov had his stick down. And Zalapski either stepped on the stick or got a little help. I think we'll have to see here. Right along the board. Here he comes in there. Oh, he, he, got, he got the stick. He got tripped. He put it right on that, le on that left that ankle. And when you want to take it, if that's your next stride, you're, uh, you're going to be looking at the ice awful close. Fifth penalty of the game. Second to the Soviets. 23 seconds left in the period. Let's see what Dave King sends up for a power play alignment. Hampshire, Poplinski, and Boisbear up front. Tambolini will be a point man along with Felix. Ready on the faceoff. Hampshire against Karutop, and Karutop wins it. The Pesop trying to clear it. Got it to Karutop, who fires it down the ice. This is Tambellini. To Felix. Ten seconds left in the period. Here's Hapshide. Long shot hit for Tisop and went wide. The Tisop back to clear it out in front. Karutop there to cover up. And he carries out as the buzzer goes to end the second period. A terrific period for the Soviets. Well, they pick up the goals from Yashin and Bekov, and they have a 2-0 lead now. And it's going to be uphill for Canada from here on out. Shots on goal favor the Soviets, too, 21-14. It's 2-0 Soviet. Camelini is a point man going for more offense, but he doesn't very often get to carry the puck up the ice and start looking where you're going to dump it in. This is kind of a new thing for him right now, and that, was, that really wasn't his best dumping. Here's Yanni for Canada. 28 seconds left in the penalty. 
Yanni flips it in. And again, Semyonov back to clear it. Bill Graw knocks it down, but Big Semyonov came up with the puck to Swetlov. And the Soviets come to center. Swetlov moving in, gets it to Semyonov. He's too well checked by Yanni and then jammed into the board. Swetlov for the Soviets. Loses it, and back comes Jeremchuk. Makarov out of the penalty box. Pass to Zalapki. Shoots up high off the glass. And right over the glass into the crowd. Meanwhile, the Soviets have killed off the penalty. Well, the Soviets doing a very, very good job. You know, they're so quick at getting back there. The Canadians trying to get in on top of them and hem them in. But Zerli Zalapski got the pass there. wasn't on his stick. He really had it. was a bouncing puck. By the time he was waiting for it to settle down, the Soviet defenseman got there and deflected that, that puck into the crowd. Brad Park, you've been involved with the team down 2 0 coming into the third period. What do we have to do to open this thing up and get a goal? Well, it depends if you're down one goal or two goals or four goals. If you're down four goals, you try to get one every five minutes. If you're down two goals, which the Canadians are right now, you're looking at getting one in the first 10 minutes. And if you can accomplish that, that means you've got 10 minutes to tie this hockey game. Here's Malinowski getting it to Tim Waters. Waters firing it in. And Biakin is back for the Soviets. To Kamiensky. Randy Gregg skates him off. Bekov fires it in. Homatov in to get it. Couldn't. Now Gusarov in behind the net to Bekov. And he got upended by Waters. Bekov after it again. Into the corner. Homatov tries to center. Into the other corner, Kamienski bumping with Sherbin. Kamienski gets the puck. Couldn't get it centered. Now Homatov tied up by Randy Gregg. Kamienski into the other corner. To Homatov. Gregg has him tied up before the puck ever got there. Now Bekov out in front. Wrap around backhand shot. Wide of the target. Gusarov into the corner. Canada's Sherbin had it. Lost it. And some tough action on the boards inside Canada's blue line. Now Waters circles back. And over on the far side, Barry took out Fiakin. And that allowed the puck to go down the ice. Back up, back to get it. Soviets leading 2 0. We're early in the third period. Here's Lomakin into the Canadian zone. Check. Canada clear it out to center and Casatona back to get it. Got it away. Here's Chris Felix to your rim shot. Canada on offense. Back to the point. Felix shooting. Milnikov the save. And the rebound cleared into center ice. Felix for your rim shot. Canada trying to attack again, but Tierney breaks it up. Back he comes. Leaves it for Mugilney, who shot the flex wide. Tierney a chance. That's blocked. And now Tambellini feeding it into center ice. But Fatisov is back for the Soviets. His pass to number 21, Alexander Tierney. Tierney centered, Mogilny fans on it as he tried to spin around. And Zalapsky, headman to Boisvert to Yeremchuk at least. Tierney there to intercept that. And circling back is Krutov, number nine. Soviets leading two to nothing and in complete control at this point. Puck shot down the ice. Zalapsky back, and that's icing against the Soviets. Let's look at the fireworks in downtown Calgary tonight. Lots of them downtown. Not too much here in the Olympic Sandal Dome. Just the two goals have been scored. Boy, that's a show, isn't it? But last night, it is terrific. Good. Good here in awe of that. They know how to put on a party in this town, Dan. That they do. That happens every evening around this time in Calgary. After the medal presentations, they have a laser show and then the fireworks. We'd like some fireworks here. But so far, the Soviets in control, leading two to nothing. And they clear it into center ice. Hustling back after it is Tony Stiles. Burke out of the net to play the puck. Fires it high off the glass, and Sherman poked it ahead to Barry. Barry checked by Krobchuk on the play. Now Stiles jumped up, knocked it down, crosses the red line, and dumps it in. In comes Sherman, now Hampshire. 
shot behind the net. Dial trying to center a deflection by Hampshire, but off the target, and Makarov comes up with the puck. Look at him stick handle his way out of trouble. Now they drop it to Stelno, who gives it to Makarov. Lost it. Chance for Zalewski, but Stelno back defensively. To Karutov with Makarov. Only Waters back, and he poked it off the Soviet player's stick and took him out of the play, and Gord Sherman starts back. Into center ice to Hampshire. Hampshire trying to center. Broken up and cleared back out. Here's Karutov to Makarov. Moving in, a chance. And missing with Semyonov as he went to his backhand. Now centered and off escape. And Burke had to be sharp and alert on that one. Here's Schreiber for Canada. Intercepting on the blue line with Swetlop. Back into center ice for Swetlop. Into Yashin. Shot right on Burke to say. Over on the far side for Swetlop. Back on the point. Shot wide of the net. And it's cleared around on the board by Trent Yanni. And coming up with it is Schreiber. For Yanni. Head manning it ahead to Bradley. Into Bois there. Centered, put it right in front, but Schreiber couldn't try or get a stick on it for the deflection. And the Soviets come back. Yashin. Moving in on left wing. Taken out by Yanni. And Felix has it for Canada. Head manning to Paplinski, who flies into the. Soviet zone on left wing. Paplinski can't get it centered. As he battles with Fadisov, and then the Soviets clear it out. This is Stiles back to get it. Rolled off his stick and having to hustle back with Poivre. Soviets, Ron, playing almost a letter-perfect game right here. Well, right now, they've just got Canada tied so completely up. There's an offensive chance by Kaminsky that Burke had to stop centered. And now Poplinski starts back. Kaminsky held it in. To Homatov. Into Kaminsky. Kaminsky cuts in. Burke slid out, made the save. And Felix comes back for Canada. Tim Alanowski couldn't get it out of the zone. Felix back after it. Soviets leading two to nothing. And seemingly in control right here. Felix starts back, fires it in. But Tisov back to get it. Loses Malinowski a chance. Jack before he could shoot and Fatisov. Clearing it. Bekov got it to center. Zalapski. Loses now McGilney giving it to Bekov. Bekov tied up by Zalapski and ridden out. Bill Grau over to get it. To Yeremchuk. And he circles his own goal. Yeremchuk lost it. Held in by Lomakin. Side of the net. Mogilny shoots. He scores! The youngster Mogilny to make it three to nothing for the Soviet Union. Well, Canada just simply could not get out of his own zone. Mogilny celebrating, of course, but they kept trying, trying, and things would happen. They'd turn it over before they got to the line. Canada feeling the pressure of a, almost a full court press. And here's Mogilny just getting it alone inside of the net. And putting it, I think, between the pads of Burke. I think Sean... Here's the turnover right here. That was the key to it. I think Sean Burke was playing the pass. Watches Mogilny gets the puck here. He comes in front. Now, Burke starts to... He's turned sideways. Instead of just playing the shooter, he's turned sideways because he's thinking he's having to go to the other side. You can't fall him because the Soviets just had two excellent chances just before that by Kamensky and Semyonov. They've been in alone on Sean Burke, and he's starting to guess who's going to be free, who's going to get the open puck. And am I going to look bad? I'll give hockey fans a tip. Remember that name, Mogilny, for oh. future international games. This is the youngster, and that's his second goal of this tournament. Will Mackin assisting. Eight minutes the time. Gives the Soviets a 3 0 lead. Now Sherman for Canada drive. Rebound to Habside, but Milnikov able to hold it out. And it's cleared to center ice. Sherman has it there. Dropping it back for Trentiani. Well, Milnikov doesn't have much of a glove hand, but. The way the defense is playing in front of them, it doesn't seem to matter. Waters getting it to Sherman. It's shot in, and Larianov goes back to pick it up. Larianov beats one man, then feeds it to Stelnov. Into center ice. Soviets were going to change, but 
Probchek saw the puck and then fired it in. And Burke gives it to Felix. Up the middle. Missing Bradley goes the length of the ice. Bayakin back to touch it. And that's icing against Canada. 11-0-1 to play. And the Soviets with a 3-0 lead. Well, Sherman, uh, who had the chance in front of the net, watch for him, he's number 10, intercepted it at the blue line and then whistled it out off the glove. Tried to snap it. But then he covered up alertly. Canada needs a break on something like that. They're not getting them. The line, you make your own breaks. And really not that tough around the net. Dave King talking it up at Team Canada's bench. He felt his club almost had to win this game to stay alive, and I think we agree, Ron. Well, they now really are up against it. Loose puck, Burke comes out, cleared it. Knocked down, Gusarov now the sweat lob in front, Semyonov just missed on the backhand. Here's Semyonov again. Now sweat lob out in front. Centered it, Biakin a drive, and Burke kicked out his right pad to stop that. In the corner is Yashin, and he's tied up on the play by Felix. Puck came loose to the point, Gusarov shot it back in, and Felix and Yashin are still there. Now Semyonov. And it's Canada clearing it out of there. Third Poivier flips it down into the Soviet zone with Semyonov back to get it. And Biakin just clears it to the Canadian blue line. Poplinski back to Randy Gregg. Now to Poplinski again, but Gusarov there to ride him out. And Gregg goes back for Canada. Gregg lead pass. Kasatonov there to intercept. Over on left wing for Fatisov. Now shooting it ahead on right wing and back is Malinowski for Canada. Canada trailing three to nothing and needing some offense badly at this point. Back off to Kaminsky. Shot wide to the target. And it bounces into center ice. Fatisov, who's been so dominant through these Olympics, shoots it in. Here's Beckoff trying to center. Knocked down by Greg. And back for Canada comes Tambellini. In for Vilgra. He drops it back. Comes to Zalewski, but a shot blocked by Kaminsky. And here comes Homatov for the Soviets. Puts on the brake. Tries to make a play. Does. Lomakin in front. Vakov is stopped by Burke from close in. Don't fault Burke on this game. He has been outstanding. Centered again. Kassat don't off a shot. And that one blocked by Sherbet. And now Canada's Hampshire starts back. Not as far as center. Now Waters firing it in. And the Soviets go back. Again, I think the Soviets did smell a kill here right now. They're going to they're gonna run this score up. They got the Canadians backing in. The Canadians are trying to get some offense, making gambles. It's like they smell a kill and they want to go after them. Three to nothing. The Soviets leading. Lomakin trying to carry out. Yanni at the blue line, giving it to Gord Sherbin. Sherbin to Waters. And it's dumped in. And it's offside at the Soviet blue line. 8-13 to play. The Soviets leading Canada 3 to nothing. We'll be right back. Nowhere on earth but at the bay will you find savings like this on Beaumark floor care. Save 25% on all Beaumark floor care designed to pick up everything from dirt and fluff to stardust. Don't miss this sensational offer of 25% off Beaumont floor care only at the bay during flying colors. The sale's so great, it's out of this world. Well, the Soviets here in the third period have scored a goal. They've outshot Canada 8-3. to three. Here is Larianov with a drive just wide of the net. Now a loose puck chased after by Ken Berry or by Brian Bradley it is. Bradley trying to get it in front, but there defensively was Stelnov. And now Kropchuk into center ice. The Stelnov as he moves on the attack. Got it in front. Cleared away by Waters. Soviets Makarov in the grasp of Waters. And Bradley is back for Canada. Bradley over to Tony Stiles. Now to Yeremchuk. 
Up the middle to Tambellini, got to center, but Karutov knocked it down, and Larianov drops it back to Biakin. He gives it to Larianov. Soviets are playing that funny game. They won't give you the puck. Here's a long pass by Canada down the ice. And as Gusarov goes back to touch it, that's icing against Canada. Well, I started to say earlier in the game that Canada had not scored a goal against the Soviet Union in the, the Olympics since 1980. They had a game in which they scored four, lost 6-4 in 1980. And the last one, too, there's a shot just wide of the net. Great, the outside of the post on Sean Burke. Burke will tell you he had it all the way. There's Igor Larionov. Let that shot go. Soviets well on their way to their sixth straight victory in these Olympics. To this point, they've outscored the opposition 35 to 10. I think that's kind of a dominant statistic. Well, they, last year in the medal, last Olympics in the medal round, they gave up only one goal in the medal round. And they look like they're going to be just as tough this time around. Of course, the guy in the goal that time was Tretiak. Here's a loose puck knocked into center ice by Yashin. Going back after it, Zalapski for Canada. Canada trailing 3-0 and running out of time. Barry now pokes it to center. Tambellini races after it, but Kasatonov is there to clear it to center. And Canada drop it back to Zalapski. Now Randy Gregg to Malinowski, but Kasatonov there to intercept. Soviets. Swetlov into the zone. Dropping it back. Here's a chance for Semyonov, and his shot deflects and goes up over the glass into the crowd. Sitting right down in front of our broadcast booth is the general manager of the Boston Bruins, Harry Sinden. Way back in 1960, I'm sure Harry Sinden left Squaw Valley, very disappointed that he only got a silver medal. But he now I'm sure realizes just what that silver medal means. It has been a long, lean period since 1960. Canada has won only a bronze since, so they've never done as well. Harry was part of the Kitchener-Waterloo Dutchman team that went to the 1980 Olympics and finished second behind the United States. Here's Kamiensky for the Soviets trying to center it. Kamiensky again does get it in front, but Sherman there for Canada. Fires it out to center ice to Bilgra. Bilgra headed off by Kropchuk and Bekoff, who's been all over the place tonight for the Soviets. Comes up with it, and the Soviets come right back. Kaminsky to Homatov, just tipped away by Yanni. And then he knocks Homatov to the ice of the corner. Homatov gets back up and continues to battle out in front to Kaminsky, but Felix cleared it away. Here's Stelnov holding it in. And Canada. Fired around to Trent Yanni. Five and a half minutes left. Three nothing for the Soviets to uh, stop Canada cold here in the third period and in the bargain scored another goal. Shot in by the Soviets. Mogilny into the corner with Stiles. Lomakin comes in. Now Mogilny gets this stick up with Stiles. They fence away. Now Lomakin and Poplinski battle. And Felix back to get the puck. Up the middle for Poplinski. Into Hampshire, but just tipped away by Gusarov. And here comes Mogilny over to Stelnov. To Lomakin. Back into Stelnov into the corner. Centered. There's Mogilny in front, but just could get a stick on it. Hampshire back for Canada. To Poplinski. But he's taken out by Gusarov, and Milnikov cleared it away. Dan, if you've ever been stuck in a traffic jam and you're, you're, you're getting frustrated and impatient and everybody is going the other way and you've got a flow to them, that's what the Canadians are facing right now. The Soviets have got a great flow. Every pass they're making is on the stick. They're skating with confidence. The Canadians are struggling. They feel like they're in a traffic jam and they're just spinning their wheels. 4-12 to play. Bucket center ice, and that's Larry on up, stepping up to break it up. Makarov in to take Greg out of the play. Makarov comes up with the puck. Centered in front. Just missed the oncoming Fatisov. And it comes back to Kasatonov. Now back in the Canadian zone. A little bit of a skirmish. Randy, Greg, and Makarov. And I think we're going to get penalties against both here. Well, right behind the play. They've been at it all day. 
I've seldom seen Randy Gregg as aggressive as he has been here. There's a holding and a and a roughing call being handed out. Makarov waits right to the bench and Gregg following. Well, a lot of rough rides, and Makarov, after Greg had given him a rough ride, just took his feet out from under him. Well, they've been holding, and the, you know, the tempers are bound to get a little edgy. Brad, I don't know if this third period reminds me as much of a traffic jam as it does a clinic, and the Soviets are really putting a clinic on. There you see Harry Sender with Chicago GM Bob Popper. As I say, not very many people know that Harry is a silver medalist in the Olympics. There's uh, the business in front of the net. <laughs> Uh, finally, we had a Soviet lose his temper. Holding against Greg, tripping against Makarov. 16.04 the time. And it looks as though the Soviets are going to jump into first place in the medal round. Well, they had to get the victory. Uh, at this moment, Finland's in first place. And with the two points here, the Soviets will move back in front by a point. And Canada with just only one point in fifth place. And seeing their medal chances go slightly down the drain right here against the Soviets. Here's Patisov into Larianov. Centered in front, they score! Karutov on as pretty a passing play as you will see. That was just magic. That puck went one, two, three into the net. Well, just a great play by the Soviets. Maybe it's the clinic Dan was talking about. Look here, they cross the line. Here's Larry Anoff just finding Khrushchev going to the net, and he redirects the puck. Ryan Bradley was on his tail, but Khrushchev, if you ever try to check a, uh, a fire plug, that's like trying to check him. You just can't get a good piece of him, and even if you do, you're going to be above him. He has got the low differential in weight where he's so strong and so low to the ice, you never get a good piece of a beautiful goal. Karutov, six of the Olympics from Larianov and Patisov. 16.37 the time, 4-0 Soviets. First time that the big uh, green machine has been on the ice for a goal. You know, Ron, two weeks ago this Friday, on our opening show from these Olympics, I talked about the Soviets coming back to the pack, that they weren't as good as they used to be. Should I apologize right here? No, because I think that nobody could predict that uh, two or three players would suddenly rise above the play that they have uh, put in the last couple of, uh, well, the last two years, really. Petisov has been back to the old Petisov, the one that said uh, he's maybe the best defenseman in the world. Uh, we've had Larry Arnoff playing uh, far beyond the type of hockey we saw him play in the Canada Cup. Karutov and Makarov, and some of these young players haven't played badly either, but they're the keys, and uh, they've they con been controlling the game. Buck is shot in, Hampshire gets it to Sherman. He's tied up, Kamienski now coming up with it with two and a half minutes remaining, and the Soviets leading four to nothing. Kamienski got to center and has to circle back. Now to Gusarov, to Bekov, and it's dumped in by the Soviet Union, who have a big four-nothing lead. Waters to Zalapski, into center ice to Berry. Berry all by himself, and then Ridden out of the play by Biakin. And the Soviet, Bekov, carries out of the zone. He gives it to Gusara. We're under two minutes remaining in a long night for Canada. And the Soviets have a 4 nothing lead. Here is Waters getting it to center. Well, Mackin knocks it down. Here's Makarov breaking away. In the clear, scores! Makarov makes it 5 to nothing. Well, all of a sudden, they're getting loose. Canada now has kind of come out of its checking game, and they're getting free on them. That makes it 5 nothing. Makarov. If you want to see the strength of the Soviet players, now this guy is not a big guy. Makarov, right now, Makarov, watch him go here. Watch him take the slash right there. Boom, and he just cuts back. I mean, he did not move. He did exactly what he wanted. A small guy, but tremendously strong. Now the question is, will they get the shot out? And if the Soviets do, in the last, in the seven meetings between Canada and the Soviet Union in Olympic history, it will be the fourth time the Soviets have shut Canada out. It goes right back to 1956, when a goaltender named Puchkov was in there for the Soviet Union. In 1968 at Grenoble, it was Konovalenko. In 1984, Tretiak. And now it would appear, with 133 left, the name will be Mushkin. 
Or Milnikov, rather. Here's another look at Here's where he takes the slash and the cross check. And uh, believe me, he did not move an inch. What a strong man. Now, the Soviets are going to jump to the top of the pack with six points. Finland with five, Sweden four, Germany two, Canada one, Czechoslovakia nothing. What does that leave left for Canada with two games to play? Well, two games are against Germany and Czechoslovakia. And looking at the games those two teams played today, Canada is keep capable of winning those games. If they do, they would have five points. Now they need some help. Sweden uh, will be playing Germany. They're, they're ahead of Canada. Germany, well, we don't know. Canada, at this point, needs some help to get third, has a good chance of being fourth in the tournament. Here's Candelini shooting it in, and that's offside at the... Soviet blue line, the last scoring play, Makarov from Lomakin, 18-16 the time, to make it five to nothing. The Swedes have a game against Germany, and they have a game against the Soviet Union, and that's the key. If Sweden somehow lost both of those games and Canada won both of its games, they would get a bronze medal. But it is, as I say, they're going to need some help, especially from West Germany. And of course, they have to beat West Germany themselves. And West Germany has had good nights and obviously bad nights. They had a bad night this particular day. 106 to play. The Soviets five. Canada nothing. Raining on the parade a little bit here in Calgary tonight. These Soviets against the host country's hockey club. Here's a lead pass to Rob Chuck in center ice. Firing it to Larry on off. Felix is there. Over to Randy Gregg in Canada come to center and that's called back on a two-line offside and then Mr. Bill Brown Mr. Kropchuk Dipper on something well Canada we talked about being shut out they've been shut out now by the Soviets over a hundred minutes uh, two straight games plus about 13 minutes of a game in which by the way Canada tied the Soviets 4-4 this was at uh, Lake Placid and then a couple of late goals by the Soviets allowed them to win. High stick. That stops play, and they'll move the face off into the Soviet zone. No taking anything away from the Soviet machine tonight, Ron. Well, they've been they've been great. They they withstood uh, a lot of pressure that Canada put on them. They're, they're difficult. Uh, Dave King was counting on them losing their poise. That was the one thing he said that if we can get their goat in effect. We might be able to take advantage of that. The Soviets did not allow anybody to get their goat, if you'll forgive the expression. Since the first period, the Soviets have been in control. Here's Schreiber in the corner, trying to center, getting it to Malinowski. Got it in front, but there's Makarov with 18 seconds left, and Makarov flies out of his own zone and just drops it back to the defenseman, Biakin. They're protecting the shutout for their goaltender. In this game, Sergei Milnikov. Puck cleared down the ice. Greg back to get it with one second left. Just time for a face-off in the Soviet end of the rink, and I'm sure everyone would just have soon seen that final second tick off. Well, shutouts seem to be the norm in the in the medal round uh, of the all the games played in the medal round uh, last Olympics. Uh, there, there were four shutouts. There were only four games played in the medal round and four shutouts. Two of the three now in this medal round have been shutouts. And there it is, another one. A long evening for Canada comes to an end. And the Soviets go 6-0. They outshoot Canada 33-17. Yashin, Bekov, Mogilny, Karutov, and Makarov score. Milnikov gets the shutout. The Soviets dominant here tonight, and they defeat Canada five to nothing at the saddle dome the final score soviet five canada nothing well they're streaming out of the saddle dome just across the road from where we are rather disconsolate group naturally because uh, the ussr defeated canada tonight five to nothing that puts the soviet union in top spot in the battle brown play they have six points Finland has five, Sweden four, West Germany two, Canada one, Czechoslovakia nothing. The next